All right. Good afternoon. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and uh, this is going to be our third video uh, in this little series here, I guess you could say. Um, but this one, we are going to construct the tally book cover from our um, our tally book template. Um, we I was going to do just one big long video on on making the whole thing, but then I decided I should probably break it up into smaller videos so that people could see the different parts. Um, so in our very first video, we tooled up this, uh, this piece right here. This is the outside piece for it, the cover. Um, the second video, we did the coloring on it. And then in this video, we're going to go ahead and cut out the insides and construct it. Um, so if you want to see those other two parts of this, um, they're right here on our YouTube channel. Just take a look at them. Um, but yeah, this video is just going to be constructing this. Um, I decided that uh, I wanted to buck stitch it. I think it'd be really cool if we had a, a dark brown buck stitch, uh, just like the dark brown line that you see, that double border there. Um, so I think it'd be really neat if we buck stitch it. We don't really uh, lace or buck stitch a lot of projects, and, and um, it, it's kind of fun, and it also shows off that you can buck, buck stitch more than, uh, than just belts. So... Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is uh, we've already cut out the main body, the, the back of it from, uh, from before because we had to do that to, um, to tool that, that first video up. So we're still gonna, we're gonna set that part of the template aside. Um, for the interior, you could use really anything five ounces or less, I guess you could say for the, uh, for the two insides that hold like your book pieces, the, these larger pieces right here. Um, what I have already cut out here is just a strip of, uh, it's, it's two to three ounce, um, English bridle. It's tan, so it'll kind of match the, uh, the russet tooling leather that I made the outside out of. Um, and also it'll really stand out against the, uh, the dark brown buck stitch that I plan to use with it. So there you go. Um, so anyway, I'm going to put the camera down cause you don't need to see my face. You need to see what we're doing. And, um, there you have it. So let me turn the radio down just another notch there. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to cut out two of this piece right here. It's labeled uh, tally book number two of three, the insides. You can cut it from anywhere from two to four ounces. Uh, honestly, you could even cut a five ounce if you wanted. But overall, you're just wanting to not make the, the book too thick. Um, the exterior of this book was cut from four to five ounce. Um, so if you use another piece of four to five ounce, just know that that's going to be a, a nine to 10 ounce, um, edge on this. And that's, that's getting pretty thick. So that's why I'm using, um, two to three ounce on, uh, on this part right here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to cut out two of these. And then we also have our little, uh, business card pocket that you can see, you know, on the inside of this book. And I need to cut one of those out. And no matter what you cut that, that larger piece out of, I suggest using about a two ounce for that little business card pocket, um, just so it doesn't get all, all bulky right there in the center. So, um, yeah, first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut, pull myself out a new um, blade for my scalpel handle here. Pull that old one off. Okay, where's all my blades? All right. At one point, I accidentally bought number 10 blades. I really like the number 11, but I don't seem to see any in there, and I'm not going to hold the video up as I look around, so I will use a number 10 blade. Um, the number 10 blade just has a big old fat round head on it as opposed to the number 11 has that nice little point to get, help you get up into the details and, uh, and stuff like that. So I'm going to cut one of these pieces out on camera and then I'll pause it so that the video doesn't get crazy long while you watch me do, you know, just the same thing over and over basically. Um, let's see here on this leather. I've got a little bit of a spot right there that I can rub out, but there's a scar right here. So I'm gonna to go to where I'm not using the scarred piece. Okay. 
All right. Um, by the way, in one of the videos I told I was going to put in the comments about the, the handle, who made this uh, this cool handle I've got on my, my scalpel here. And um, somebody reminded me later that I forgot to put it in the comments. So I'm just going to go ahead, even though I put it in those comments, I'll go ahead and talk about it here. I saw that guy's card here just a second ago. There it is. All right. I'm going to hold this dude's card up for everybody to see. But uh, his name is Mark Drury. There's his phone number right there. He's got a uh, Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook, it looks like. But his number is 641-751-3012. Um, through a friend, he sent me this handle, and uh, it's just totally awesome. I, I didn't think I would like it because it's real big and... and uh, you know, kind of hefty compared to the handle I was using, which is this little wooden one right here. But honestly, I love it. Let me get this thing back in focus. Huh? That's it. Tonight, Janie and I are going on a date, and when we're out, we're going to go find us a better camera because this is making me... I don't like it. Focused? Not focused. There we go. All right. Sorry about that, folks. I'm pretty low-tech. I don't really know a lot about this stuff. Hopefully somebody at a... Best Buy does because I'll need professional help. All right. All right. Now these little inside corners here are why I wanted the number 11 blade because it'll follow that edge a lot easier. It's a much slimmer blade. But again, I didn't see one sitting there, so I'll just have to do what I can here. Now, I'm very fortunate that I can kind of cut ambidextrously so I can change hands and I don't ever have to move the project for the most part. I'm sure now that I've said that, I'll screw something up. All right, so there's one of these pieces cut out. Now I need to cut out a second one, and then I'll cut out that smaller piece the, uh, for the um, card. This one I'll go ahead and use the straight edge I already have for one side of it, and that'll make it a little easier. I guess I lied. I'd said that I was going to pause the camera before I cut out a second piece, but I didn't do that, did I? Now you're stuck with me. Sorry about your luck. Call Jenny Sue Young and start a support group. She's stuck with me, too. <laughs> Almost done. Try not to get too aggressive on my scalpel because I don't want to tear up my mat. Sometimes that also means I'm not cutting my leather right either. Nope. I will say this, if, if Mr. Drury watches this video, he may want to offer one where he sands down one side of this a little bit so that it does not roll off the table. Um, kind of like all my... 
all of my sewing holes have a flat side on them and I love that because then they don't roll off my table. So uh, I will pass that suggestion along in case he doesn't watch this video but it's just kind of a good safety feature plus it also if it doesn't roll off the table then it won't get damaged when it hits the floor. It is difficult to cut around the, uh, the curves here. I understand the, that, but the curves sure look a lot nicer than trying to cut it just square everywhere. Um, so yeah, apologize for making it difficult on the template, but I promise it looks a lot better than just a square edge to have that nice little cutout. There we go. I'll clean that little piece up a little bit. All right. So there we go. Um, this one is a really easy one to uh, to cut out because it's just a few pieces. So we now have an inside front, an inside back, and a business card insert. All right. Um, so now what I need to do, though, is I need to finish um, all four edges of the business card insert and then uh, just the inside edges of the, uh, the, the liners, the uh, interior liner pieces there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, reach back here and grab my uh, Montana edger number one for this tiny little thin stuff. Okay, um, I'm only finishing this inside edge on these two pieces because the other three sides of it will be um, finished with the rest of the book. When the whole book is put together, I'll finish those edges and that way they, they, they burnish together really nicely and the, they, they, they hold up really well. All right, so those two, I, uh, I went ahead and edge beveled top and bottom edges. Okay, now this one, I'm going to be edge bevel the top and bottom of the, the very top part of it here. But then these other three sides, I'm only going to edge bevel the very top. Um, the reason is this will be sewn flat onto another piece, and I need to be able to put cards behind that, so I want that rounded nicely. But the other three sides, I want them to lay flat against the piece that they're sewn to. So that's why I'm going to do it that way. So again, I'm doing the top and the back, or the front and the back of the uh, top rounded edge. 
And then the other three, I'm just going to do the front side, the, the, the grain side of the leather. And I'm not going to flip it over and do the flesh side. A little bit of a wild right there. Let me get rid of some of that. All right, so now I'm gonna uh, get a bottle of dye over here. This is Angelus medium brown, and I'm gonna very lightly dye just the edges of those pieces. Um, only only edges that I actually just uh, edged or use the uh, that gum it never fails. Get it on my hand no matter how careful I am. Um, but like on these pieces, I'm only going to do the piece that I, uh, I did the edge beveling on the other pieces, uh, the other sides of it will be, um, dyed when the whole thing gets edge beveled and, and finished. So there's one. And the other. Now, this piece, I'm going to go all the way around to all four sides because that's what I edge beveled. All right, carefully put my dye away. I love Angela's dyes, but I hate the bottles they come in because they just tip over too daggum easy. So I'm always very careful as I put the lids back on them. All right, so now we need to sew this card piece to one of these pieces, all right? And when I do that, I want to do it in a way that when there's a card in it, the card doesn't stick way out here. It's okay if it sticks up a little bit because it makes it easier to grab. But my main goal is when I sew this line down here, I want to leave plenty of room for the outside edge stitching down here. Okay, so like this one's about a quarter of an inch up, but there's no exact measurement that it needs to be. You just have to keep in mind that you don't want your card, your business card, it's sewn right there you don't want that business card so sticking out here that it's not gonna be held in well all right so there you go um so what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna grab one of my centering rulers if i can find one should have grabbed one before the video started i apologize no nope, that's not one i know where there's one hanging All right, so I'll grab one of my centering rulers here. I'm gonna find the center of the big piece and I'll mark it with my fingernail. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark right along the edge with my fingernail, just a little bitty notch that when I do my final uh, edge beveling and sanding, that'll go away anyway. Now I need to find the center of this piece. And this piece looks like it's about four inches long. So make a little mark in the center. Now when I go to put this one on here, as long as these two lines line up like the sights of a gun, then this bad boy is ready to sew and, it, and it's perfectly in the center. So easy trick. All right, I'm going to grab my glue. Gotta be really, really careful when I apply this, um, you know, when you're using contact cement, you want to put it on both pieces. Um, and with this not being just something that I'm putting around on the, on the outside edge, you know, I've got to be careful to mark where I'm going to put it. So I'm going to get a stylus. 
and I'm gonna very carefully underneath this piece of leather mark my glue line. Okay, and again, it's underneath this. I don't want it to show once the two pieces are glued together and sewn together. I don't want this line to show. All right, now we're gonna to get to gluing. If my glue jar is not glued shut. <laughs> I know the trick is to put a, a bead of Vaseline around the, uh, the, um, the threads of your glue jar and then you'll never glue it shut again. Problem is, I've just never stopped and done it. Put a tiny bit of glue just right along the very edge of this piece here. And then again, I'm going to run just a little bit of glue right along just inside that line there. And it doesn't need to be perfect and all that. I just need it to hold that piece on for sewing. And I'll tell you this, as I put that glue on there, I realized I've already screwed up. I should have burnished the edges of this small piece right here. Okay, I should have burnished these the, the all four edges of this piece before I glued it on here, but now it's got glue on it, too late. That's okay, this is just gonna be my shop notebook. But if I were letting this leave the shop, I would have definitely made sure I burnished that before I, uh, I glued it on. All right, so there we have it. Now, it's gonna be a real easy hand sewing job to put this piece on. Um, and like I said, the rest of the book's gonna be buck stitched, but I'm just gonna hand sew this piece on. Um, so yeah. Six, All right. So I'm just going to use my pricking irons. Um, again, these are the, the pricking irons that we have made for us. Um, this is maybe three and a half ounces of leather, maybe. So I'm going to break the rules of pricking irons and I'm going to go ahead and send this stuff all the way through the leather. When generally with pricking irons, you just give them a tap and you, you kind of barely mark where your stitches are going to be. Again, I realize I'm breaking the rules. I don't need a bunch of flack about it. I am getting the job done, and I can assure you that my stitches will be beautiful. So, going along, creating some holes here, and then we will saddle stitch this piece on. I hadn't decided what color I'll use. Probably a brown thread since I'm doing brown buck stitch. Guess it would make sense to do that. So this bad boy's ready to sew on. Um, I am going to pause the camera for this part. Um, it's just standard saddle stitching that I'm about to do. And um, when I turn it back on, this will be on. And we'll be ready to glue the entire project together and start uh, buck stitching. So I'm going to pause it now. Alrighty. So while the camera's off, I saddle stitched that up right quick. And... Um, yeah, so now what I need to do is go ahead and burnish these inside edges here because, again, I forgot to burnish that one before I sewed the dadgum thing together. So, um, got my Ron's edge rub here. And I have a piece of canvas somewhere, I swear. I thought I did at least. Oh, 
right. I guess I could just do this on the camera, huh? All right, there's one done. All right, now we're ready to assemble, okay? So um, this, uh, this rectangle here, it's not a square, it is a rectangle. It is taller than it is wide, all right? So the tall end is obviously up. You can tell by when you put these up against it, okay? But I've got a little something I'm going to add to this with the, um, with the good graces of uh, the, the good folks over at Wicked Craig, they have allowed me to make a rubber stamp with their logo so that when I make stuff out of their leather, I can identify it and put it on there. And they have allowed us to sell these stamps. So very soon they'll be on the website and in production. But basically, see which side this is going to be. This will end up being the front. I'm going to put it right here. Boom. Wicked and Craig. Um, so it gives it a little bit of a hand feel, handmade feel. It does identify that, hey, this is made out of some badass leather from Wicked Craig. I'm going to put this on here and this one on here and then the book in it. That's just going to be an awesome little accent on the inside there. That's going to look really good. Um, again, those, those stamps will be on the website soon. Uh, but uh, they're not there just yet, so we'll make a big announcement when they when they do hit the website. All right, so we're going to get back to gluing again. Um, what I do need to pay attention to is where to stop the glue on this. All right, so I'm going to get a pin, and again, I'm going to go under where the leather stops and make little marks with a pen so that I know where to not put glue. Then the exact same thing on the back side here. Cool. Okay. Just refilled my glue jar and it's extremely full. I'm just running it right along the edges. I'm not even an eighth of an inch in. Just want to barely touch it. I'm not trying to glue it together to the point that it'll hold forever. I just want it to be a nice seamless edge and I want it to sew or uh, to, to, to burnish together really well. So that's my plan with the glue here. I took a pretty ugly piece of uh, leather. This was actually cut out of the belly. Um, this was just a scrap left over from when I did um, somebody's square footage cut off the website. And so I've got a little bit of roughness on the back side of this leather, but again, this doesn't bother me at all. Um, this book is just going to be for my back pocket inside the shop. And so, yeah. Sometimes we have to use every bit of leather because it's shameful to waste it. This poor cow died just so that we could enjoy steaks and a nice 
bit of leather. And I don't know why I just glued that, sealed that glue jar shut because I need it again. <laughs> All right, let me glue up the backs of these. With the same glue jar I just sealed. like it when my glue jar is full because then I can use this thing like it's a nice little handle. It works well. Alright, now I can seal up my glue jar and set it aside. Pull all that extra glue off my cutting mat here. And then I'm going to move this mat out of the way while I put those pieces together so I have something nice and flat to put them together on this surface here. But then we're going to bring that mat back because that's what we're going to use while we uh, set our... Uh, all of our pricking or our uh, <clears throat> buck stitch uh, when we use our buck stitch chisels. So I'm going to line this up in the corner here and stick it down, making sure that the edges are very, very well aligned because that will save me a lot of headache when it comes time to sand the edges and burnish them. So there we go. There's one side right there. The same on the back side. There should be. Ready for some buck stitching. All right. So I'm going to take my wing dividers. Run me a little borderline. And get ready to start knocking my buck stitch chisels down into the leather. There we go with that. All right, I'm going to take my buck stitch chisels. And I'll start just a little bit away from the, uh, the corner here. The goal is never to have one directly in the corner. Uh, when I use these buck stitch chisels, I have to be very cognizant. I don't use them on a cutting board, and I don't use them on a cutting mat. Um, I use them over a piece of rubber and uh, something that gives way for them to, to go down through. That way they stay nice and sharp. Um, this is the ones that we sell. This is the smaller of the sets that we sell. It's marked one-eighth of an inch, and uh, we'll be using uh, one-eighth of an inch um, lace to do this buck stitching. Now, I will say this. I have to have an even number of um, holes going around this project. 
so that when it comes back around to itself, it'll be either going out or coming in, or coming out or going into the outside. And that way you don't have two buck stitches that are right next to each other that don't look right. And I'll show you how I finish, uh, finish them out and everything, uh, how I start to finish them so that we can hide the tails. All right, now on this last side, again, I have to make sure that I have an even number of holes all the way around this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at both ends and kind of work my way towards the middle. Because if you, if you have a, a, one that's not evenly spaced, you don't want it down in the corner because it'll be really, really easy to pick out and see. If it's kind of spaced out somewhere in the middle and there's a couple of... of uh, holes that are of different lengths, it's much more difficult to see. I know that it sounds like it wouldn't, it, that that's not right, but I promise you it'll work. All right. So, um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second as we get to it here. Alright, so what I've done here is left me a nice wide gap that there should be, oh wow, those line up perfectly, so I hope we've got the right number of holes. There should be three, three more in here, but it's also enough that I could make it um, two and, and leave just a tiny bit more spacing in between them. But I've got to count my holes right quick, so matter of fact, I'm going to pause this while I sit and count my holes because you don't need to watch it. Alright, there are 112 holes already. Okay. So if I put in these three, it will give me an odd number. And again, I need an even number. So Let me make sure I count. I'm going to count that one more time because now all of a sudden I'm doubting myself. Give me a second. Sorry about that. All right. I am so glad I went back and recounted because in my head, I had already added the other three, making it 112. There are 109 holes around this, so there will be three more. Okay. And I got really lucky because my punch lines up just perfectly where I can put it across here and those three will punch in, the rest of them fall straight into the holes that we've already got going on. Now there are 112. I am really, really glad that I stopped to recount. Um, so let me try to explain what I was talking about with that little space I had that needed three more. If I was already at an even number, then I would only have added two more. And instead of going, you know, and putting these three, I would have used my single prong punch and I would have gone back and evenly spaced two, two holes in there instead of three. And I can assure you it would have, it would have looked a lot nicer than when I got to the end and I had two buck stitches that were right next to each other when it's supposed to skip one every other, um, every other stitch. All right. So. I will determine this is the back of the project here because the front of it has the uh, the card pocket there. All right, and um, let's see if we can separate what we glued together. I should have left a space um, where there was no glue for my buck stitching to go through. So I'm going to separate 
from the backside here so that we can, uh, what I want to do is I want to come out with my needle and I want to have the, the stitch hidden in between the layers of leather. All right, I don't want it. I don't want it on the back side. So, I have here some one eighth inch brown um, all leather calf lace. We sell this on our website. Um, it's not going to take a ton of it on this project, but I am a big advocate for using as large of a piece as I can get away with because I don't want to splice it. I never, ever, ever want to splice it. You can splice it. It is possible to splice it. I just don't want to get this knot out of here. This has been sitting down there in a uh, in a box in my sewing and, and lacing stuff. All right, I'm going to grab one of my two-prong lacing needles. Also an item that we have at makersleathersupply.com. And I'm going to go ahead and put the needle on the... Uh, maybe I am. This one, the prong is bent on it. It's pretty well used. We have another one, so I don't rip my finger now off. Um, I use these needles for like years and years. They I never replace them, and uh, so sometimes they get old and rusted together. So, all right. When I put this needle on here, what I normally do is I put the grain side of the la the lace up against the prongs, okay, and then I push it together. A lot of the time I'll grab a pair of pliers and I will squeeze the needle closed on the on the lace, all right, and I put the prongs through the, the grain side because it's the strongest side of the lace, all right. Now, We've, uh, we've done videos on buck stitching before, but I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of buck stitching video here. And I'm going to bring this needle up between those layers of leather. All right, and I will go ahead. Uh, forgot my big rule. All right, you see where, get this thing focused on the needle here, hang on. All right. So on the sides of the needle, you see that sharp point right there where the edge of the lace is? That, uh, that sharp point right there. I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm going to cut that off. And that way it will slide through the leather much nicer without that catching it. So all I'm doing is trim, trimming it and beveling it down a little bit. And then this will go into the leather much, much nicer. All right, let's try that one more again. So I'm going to go up between the layers of leather. I'm going to pull my thread or my uh, lace through. Bunch of lace. I know I don't need this much. Let's pull that much through, and then I'll cut the tail of it here. I know I've still got way more than I need, but again, I'd rather have more than need to splice it later. All right, now I want to keep, make sure I know where my lace is at and, uh, you know, which way is up on it, basically. And when I came out of that hole, I had the, um, I need a stick. Let me grab my horse, my pony. Always best to stitch and lace in a pony. That way it holds it for you and you don't get confused on where you're at. Okay, now when I buck stitch, how I do it is I like the diamond method, which has the little twist in it. So when that lace came out of that hole, it was green side up. Then I kept it completely straight, and when I put it back in, I'm going to put it back in grain side down. Or, yeah, grain side down. And that's going to give me that little diamond-shaped twist that I want in there. So let me pull that straight through right quick. I'm going to send it back through from the back. Once again, grain side up. 
when coming to, from the back. Okay, and I'll do that so that I don't have to, uh, I do that right now while this little loop is small and I don't, I know I don't have any twists in this little section. But now I can pull this one through and pull it kind of tight. I don't want to pull it too tight because I've still got my piece sticking out out here and I don't want to accidentally pull that through. But I just want to make sure that I don't have any extra twists in here. And I sure as heck do. And that's why we do it this way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if I can cheat here and put that piece right back through that hole. I bet I can't, but I'm going to try. Trying to sharpen it a little bit. Come on, buddy. All right, let me uh, fix this little problem here, and I'll turn the video back on in just a second. All right, sorry about that pause. I didn't want y'all to hear me cussing and all that. Jenny gets mad if I accidentally cuss on a video. <laughs> um, all right, so now, once again, we're in a repetitious cycle. We're going to come out of it with the grain side up, go back in it. We're going to loop over, go back in it with the grain side down. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of them here, and then just pull it all the way through all of them. Okay, and every time I want to pull it a little bit tight. I don't. I'm not trying to pull it so tight that I break the lace or that I, you know, damage the leather or something. But I want to pull it tight enough that um, when I hammer it out at the end, that there won't be any bubbles or anything like that in it. Okay. Because uh, the hammering at the end of this is what's really going to make this pretty. Um, it looks okay like it is loose, but once I hammer it flat, it, it really, really looks a lot better. And then we're just going to keep going all the way around it, just like that. We're going to um, go from the back to the front. We'll go green side of the lace up. And then when we go back uh, back through to the back side, it'll be green side down. And I'm going to do that around the entire project, okay? So I'm going to pause the video. And that's what I'll do. And I may not even be able to unpause the video until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning because this is going to take some time. And I promised Jamie Sue a date light tonight, and I'm pretty excited about it. So if I'm wearing a different colored shirt when the video comes back on, that's what happened. We'll be right back. All right. Good morning. So sure enough, I didn't get to finish this up until uh, this morning. So this turned into a two-day project, and I am wearing a different colored shirt. Um, but anyway, it is buck-stitched all the way to the last stitch. Um, I was just going to show everybody how I kind of finished that off. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the official way to do what I'm about to do is, but I know how I want to do it, and uh, it should work just fine. So, I'm going to get some things out of the way here. And we're going to get started on it. I'm real bad about, you know... Um, one of the, the things that I've got to remember with tools, especially bladed tools, is, you know, when you're not using them, you really should get them off your bench and put them away um, because the more things that bang into them and the more that they bang into each other and stuff like that, then you, you, you're risking damaging those blades. And uh, I'd rather just put them away than to have to sharpen the daggum things. So there's my little bench tip for the morning, I reckon. Um, okay, so when I went all the way around, first off, uh, if you remember when we started uh, the buck stitching, we came in from in between the layers of leather, 
And um, I've still got a tail there. It's just inside the book cover here. Okay. Um, so we started out in between the layers of leather. So when we get to our very final stitch on the back side, there's, there's nothing in that last little hole right there. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to bring my last, my tail of my buck stitch here, and I'm going to go through that hole just in the lining piece. Okay. And since, since the, the origination piece is down inside the book cover, I'm going to take this one out the edge. Okay. And then what I'm going to end up doing is, um, let me straighten that last little bubble up there. Didn't want to lay flat. What I'm going to end up doing is I'll cut this off, but first I'm going to glue that entire little edge right there, that bubble you see there. I'm going to glue all that, just shove glue down there, and pinch it together. Then I'm going to cut, I'm going to, uh, Take my hammer and hammer all the way around all of this to flatten all that buck stitching out. And then I'm going to just trim that lace off right even with the edge. And yeah, if you look hard enough, you'll see that little bitty um, piece of lace. Uh, you know, you'll see it um, in the burnish, fin finished burnish. But I like that a lot more than, say, skipping a hole or having, having uh, you know, to tie it off or something crazy like that. So that's, that's how I like to finish my, uh, my buck stitch on a lined item. Honestly, on an unlined item, I, I wouldn't even know what to do. So I just don't buck stitch things that aren't lined. So like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is put some glue into that little area. Um, that's gonna be nice and fun, but I'll figure out a way here. I may use my stylus and just kind of poke it down in there. Um, but I also need to re-glue that edge anyway because I want it to burnish nicely. And it's not gonna burnish nicely with separation in that area. Let's we'll see if we can do this without making too much of a trouble. All right, I'm going to get creative here because I've only got two hands. I probably, actually, you know what, I'm going to play it safe and get my stitching horse back out. That's what the stitching horse is all about, lending you a third hand. Hang on, I'll adjust the camera so we can see this. It's a little better. All right. So um, I do re regret to say that I, I had said that I was going to um, go find a better camera last night. I, I didn't do it. Um, we went to the movie. It was a great movie. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So I'm just kind of dabbing some glue in there and letting it fall into that area. And then I will let that set up for a minute and then I will hammer it all down together. All right, I'm gonna pause this while I do that because I'm also gonna get myself a cup of coffee. I walked straight in, turned the coffee pot on, started the camera, and I don't have a cup yet. Give me a minute. All right, I am better prepared now. Um, once again, um, I, I put all that glue in there and everything, and uh, it's, it's pretty much ready to close up now. So I'm gonna put the stitching horse down again, and I'll get my... Uh, my leather worker's hammer over here. Um, when I specify a leather worker's hammer, it has a very smooth face. I've actually taken some sandpaper to it, and I've got this thing just about as shiny as I can get it, polished it up and stuff. Um, when you're doing any kind of buck stitching or lacing or anything like that, it's really nice to have a hammer like this that you can tap, uh, tap all your stitching nice and flat with. So... I'll show you a difference first on the edge you can see focus it on that area there come on buddy um, on the edge you can see where up here the, the edge goes it waves with the uh, the buck stitch but down here where I just beat all that up it's actually nice and straight um, and then also there's a much different look in the buck stitch itself kind of hard to see because the damn thing won't focus there we go all right, so here's stuff that I already hammered down nice and flat, got our little diamond shapes, and then here's the ones that are not. They're still sticking up, and, um, you know, they'll catch on stuff, and uh, they'll, um, they'll cause a problem.
putting some extra hammering right there where that uh, where that seam is, where the um, splice and the, the buck stitch is. All right, now I'll take my scalpel and I'll just cut that, that lace off nice and even there. And it should be good to go and, and last just as res as long as the rest of this, uh, this tally book will. Okay. All right, so there it is. Uh, now we're back down to just basic leather working tasks. I'm going to trim up anywhere that the liner doesn't exactly match up uh, with the face there. I'm going to go out there and use my sander, and I'm going to sand these edges nice and straight, and then I'm going to come back in, and I'm, I'm going to dye the edges and burnish them, and this is going to be another complete project. Uh, let me get the camera down where you can see the project again there. All right. So, um, like I said, I'm going I'm to trim up these edges right quick. That's really the only big place that I see. The sanding will take care of the rest of it, but there is a kind of a large place right here. Um, usually caused by uh, stretch and shrinkage as I as I tool and stuff like that is why these won't match up when it's all done. Um, the stamping is, you know, like any geometric stamping, it's going to stretch your leather pretty good, even if you put the tape on the back. So, all right, I'm going to go out there and sand that up. And uh, when I come back in, we'll do our final edge burnishing and or our... Uh, our, um, we'll have to um, use our edge beveler around the edge. I'm also going to clip these corners just a little bitty bit. Um, I would like the uh, the corners um, to be a t just a tiny bit rounded to kind of match um, the uh, the buck stitch as it goes around them. And then, um, yeah, and then also sharp corners catch on things. Rounded corners do not. So when you're putting it in your pocket and stuff like that. So anyway, um, yeah. Gonna pause this, be right back. All right, um, sanded all my edges nice and flat. Now there's no um, no uh, bulk where the, the buck stitching goes through and everything. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna round these corners real quick. I'm, I'm gonna do that by just taking my scalpel and just pushing down and just cutting the very tips of those corners off. I'm not actually needing to round them or, you know, put a, Put uh, a radius, my little radius card up there and, and cut around it or anything. I'm just going to barely 45 those and take those tips off. And that, again, that's going to, when you put it in a, a pocket or something, it's, it's going to help it to not catch and uh, break down your edge burnish on those corners. There we go. All right, I'm going to take uh, Ron's uh, Montana Edger number two, I think would be a good size for this. Maybe a three. I'm going to take a number three. And uh, I'll go around and, and edge bevel both sides of it. It's going to be difficult. I got my buck stitching right up on that edge pretty good. So this can be difficult. Plus, like I said, I was using some belly leather, and that's real... It can get kind of floppy under the, the edge beveler and everything, so. In truth, you you can use the entire side of a piece of leather. I mean, even the, the legs and the belly and the, the undesirable pieces can still be used if used properly and uh, carefully. Um, so, yeah. Um, and especially bellies, like... Um, Bellies are very inexpensive leather to be able to buy um, and practice on. I know a lot of bellies are 10, 20 bucks, and uh, that's pretty much the cheapest tooling leather you'll ever find. So if you're just practicing or building, you know, um, small things, knife sheaths, stuff like that, then belly leather's just fine. Um, so, yeah. In the first video I did where I tooled this, I showed where I compress the fibers using a, uh, a glass slicker and, uh, you know, kind of smooth this out a little bit so it would be easier to tool and have a better appearance to it. All right, so there's the outside. Now i got to do the inside. This is that uh, tan English bridle, and it's, it's, it's bubbling just fine.
All right, there we go. Get all this mess out of my way right quick, otherwise it'll be spread all over my bench. We're gonna get out our uh, Angelus medium brown leather die again, and I'll, I'll go around the edges with it, and then I'll burnish it, and this is gonna be a completed project, folks. Pretty excited. This one's gonna be the one that I put in my pocket because there's just too much stuff happening in the shop anymore and I just can't remember the things that I need to remember throughout the day. It's not a memory thing, it's just a <laughs> we're busy thing. Die on the dauber here. over there so I don't knock it over and I'll get to burnishing here um, I'm trying something new with the Ron's edge rub uh, one of our customers actually turned me on to this thing and I want to see how well it works um, it's it's kind of a paint marker type thing but it seems like it applies this stuff pretty nice and even a lot of people ask me about the Ron's Edge Rub applicator that I use in a lot of my videos, and it, and it is a great tool. It's a great item. The problem is it's expensive. Um, I mean, for me to buy it from Ron's is very expensive, and then I'd have to mark it up a little bit, and it's ridiculous. So that's why I don't sell them. People ask all the time why I don't sell it if I use it in my video, and, well, there's the reasoning. Two sides done. Sides. All right, we're ready for a tally book. Um, Clean up that little area right there. Um, 
So the last thing I always do when I'm doing a book cover or anything like that is I go in here. On this one, I can use my finger. If it's something really uh, with deep pockets, I'll use a, uh, a ruler or something like that. But I go in there and I just kind of separate right up next to the stitching where the, uh, the glue might have kind of glued it together too much that you couldn't get the, the book in there. So that's what I'm doing here. It looks like we're pretty good. I can feel the stitching all the way around it, so pretty good. So we'll grab a, we'll just steal the tally book out of this one here. And now since I buck stitched it, I may have to trim the book down just a little bit to get it in there. Um, we'll see. Nope, it's gonna slide in there just like it was meant to. So there it is. Um, there's our tally book cover, nice and finished. Um, some people will choose to put the front cover in the other side, I, I never do because honestly it makes it a little bit more difficult to close um, during break-in and stuff like that. But there is our finished product right there. Um, get the focus on it. So there is our finished product right there. Um, very happy with it. I, uh, yeah, like I said, this is going to be the one that I keep in my shop. Um, I actually even got really lucky with the the tooled pattern on it even the um the quilting just lines up right there straight on the edge and um just couldn't ask for anything better i guess so anyway uh as always thank you very much for watching i hope you were able to learn something from the video even if it's not how to make a tally book cover hopefully you know some of the procedures and processes done um helped you with with projects you are working on um so again i'm aaron heiser of makers leather supply and thank you very much for watching and uh keep on making it with makers thanks okay come on computer